Welcome back to the CheckMK channel. Today we're going to speak about folder structures in CheckMK. So I have again Robin with me um, and today we're going to talk about folder structures in CheckMK. Uh, it's something especially when you set up a new system you you will question yourself uh, how do I want to structure my folders of the host in CheckMK? Should I do it by organization, by location, by technical issues? Uh, how many levels should I should I use and so on? So that's something we want to discuss. And Robin has many experience with different projects at smaller and larger customers uh, over the last couple of years. So what would you suggest or what are you using uh, as a typical structure for for your hosts and, and check mk yeah so what i'm using is basically a quite plain structure um, to begin with so it's quite easy to implement in the first run um, but maybe it's easiest if i just uh, show you because i brought an example how that could look like okay okay so let's have a look let's dig into the configuration so you've prepared a, a small demonstration system without actual hosts, just we just show the folders. Yeah, I actually created some host as we can see, but we will see that later on. Okay. In the first place, it's just a skeleton uh, structure to give an idea um, how you would start with. So in this case, uh, we are not in the main directory, but uh, you guys out there, please consider this the main directory. Um, you can see there are some uh, major German cities in there on the top level. So this is how I go about it. First, I create a location layer. So, so it reflects uh, a company that has four data centers in Germany, for example. Right, uh, exactly. So your first folder level uh, would be the, the location. Exactly, right. I mean, one can scale that as, uh, as far as you want. So you can create uh, countries and then cities, for example. That doesn't have to be in one layer, but in this example, a company with four locations. Yeah. There we just use the distinct location for the location layer, and yeah. that's basically it. So, so you start with the location layer, and if, if you uh, have a multinational company, you would, for example, have first layer is the country, second layer is the, the location within that country, for example. Right, exactly. That depends on the company size and uh, how the locations are structured within the company um, that decides how you want to create this yeah. folder, this level of folders. And do you see a certain maximum number of folders uh, on one level in order to be still manageable? The, it, it's hard to put a number on that, actually. Um, at least I don't know of technical limita limitations at this point. Um, but of course, at some point, um, there's no overview for a human being. If you look at the screen that you have to scroll through, yeah. let's say hundreds or thousands of folders, that probably doesn't make sense. So, so then you would introduce a, uh, a new layer, for example, uh, a state or something. Exactly, or right. Okay. That could be an idea, right. Okay, so you start yeah. with the location, basically. Exactly. So then we are located in Munich, so I'm just going to go into the Munich location. Go into one location uh, as an example. and Right, and this is the next level. Um, that's a technical level that can have multiple uh, folder levels, I would say, or folder layers. Um, but what I like to do is to separate everything that's uh, related to infrastructure, meaning servers, storage systems, vi virtualization, okay. everything like mm -hmm. that, um, and network related stuff like switches, firewalls, mm -hmm. and so on. And then it depends on what you have. Here I created a folder for internet. That basically means there is everything that is not on company premises, like okay, in, okay. A, in a cloud or something hosted somewhere. Um, so this depends on what you as a company are doing within your IT environment. Um, but generally, most of the customers I see have uh, an infrastructure folder and a network folder okay. at this first layer of the technical level. And uh, infrastructure also includes application servers like databases and so on? Or uh, possibly, or right. Okay. Yeah. Um, we can dig into <coughs> the infrastructure folder just for a moment. So now we are on the third level? Yeah, we are on the third folder level in this yes, example, in this but example. it's all the technical layer, I would say. So it's again a technical layer where you have distinction between operating system Right. So in this example, it's uh, we have Linux and Windows, the major operating systems. Um, I created a folder for virtualization, no matter what solution yeah, you okay. are using, but most of the time you want to separate that in a distinct folder and storage systems in, a, in another folder. 
Just a plain question, why do you choose that as a, a second level and not start, for example, with the technical level and then make the location? You could, you, you could reverse the tree and start, I have, uh, for example, I have infrastructure and network and you go into infrastructure and then you have the, the locations. Yeah, yeah. Why, um, why would you choose that approach? You, you could do it uh, the other way around, but in most cases that I see, um, you would have more folders in the end. It would um, be more uh, cluttered and it would be hard to find the host you are looking for because it's more natural if you first choose the location yeah, okay. where you are at and then you have the operating systems um, below. Of course, it depends on the setup, but generally speaking, um, it's easier to go for a location because you know a certain set of servers is located uh, within that data center okay. um, so and then you're going in that way. If you know it's Linux, uh, you have to, most of the time, you have to drill down deeper to find the host you're actually okay, looking so for. So you think finding a host is very important because uh, there's another aspect to the folder structure, which is uh, inheritance and configuration. So as you might know, you can set attributes not only on a host level, but in a folder. And that attribute will, will be inherited to all hosts in the, in the subfolders. So right, for example, exactly. <coughs> if I have a certain rule that just applies for Linux hosts, it would be super easy to have the Linux folder at the top level, then I just need the rule once, and you with your, uh, with your locations, you need to repeat that Linux rule in all of the Linux subfolders, because for every location, you have a separate Linux folder again. Yeah. Yeah, that would be partly right. <laughs> 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 of course, as you said, if I place the rule in those folders, I would have as much rules as yes. I have folders. Um, what I like to do then is to use a host label. Okay. And as you said, uh, the inheritance, so if there's a Linux folder that's only containing Linux hosts, um, then I can use a, a host tag that, is, um, uh, that says the operating system of the host is Linux. So and you that you is you define that tag on the Linux folder, so you have to do that for every of these Linux folders. Right, exactly. But you say that's that this bit of extra work is okay, yeah. and you prefer the host to be easy findable. So, right, it's a more of I would personally I would call it organic yeah. structure. I would expect to find it like that, and that's what I often yeah, see okay. with customers that they are doing it like that um, because from the top level it's first location. And as said, with this one extra step of uh, assigning the host, la yes. host tag, um, then you can create one rule and that matches throughout your whole infrastructure. It sounds reasonable. Uh, finding a host is an operation you do very often. Right, uh, exactly. Defining tags you do just, just once in the folder and you're done. So okay. Yeah, right. And you can use it in different places. You don't have to create rules within one folder. You can create, create yeah. the rules on a higher level and uh, uh, by the host tags, um, you make sure that it's applied to the right hosts no matter where they are located. Yeah, make, makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so one further question. So we have we have a split up uh, based on location. We have split up based on on technical uh, issues. Uh, what I'm still missing is a split up on organization. Mm -hmm. So for example, you have one team dealing with Linux servers, one team with Windows servers. Yeah. Uh, do you use such a such a organization? It's actually used rarely out there, I think, uh, as far as I'm seeing it. There are some customers, but most of the time they have their monitoring team and they are administrating the whole uh, JMK and not just parts of it. Um, but of course you can implement it like uh, within these folder structure I just showed yeah. because there is still Linux Windows Server. So if you have teams like that, you can assign them to the folder. Again, you have to do it with every folder, but you have to create the folder. So it's not that much work yes. if you at the permissions on the folder in that but situation. Is it a typical situation that, uh, that uh, the, the locations are also a kind of organization structure? So I say the Linux servers in Berlin are managed by the Berlin guys and those in Munich by the Munich guys? Or is it usually not the case? It depends on the company size. I would say actually usually it's not uh, not distributed on locations. That's right. Okay. So you have one Linux team for the whole company, no matter where the servers are running. I mean, bigger companies do yeah, it okay. like that. They have dedicated teams on the loca in the locations. And I'm as asking the question because uh, there's, there's um, besides the, um, the inheritance, there's the issue with, um, with uh, permissions. So if you right. want your colleagues to manage the host themselves, yeah. you can attach a permission to, an, uh, to a folder that allows you to add hosts in the folder. 
Right. So if you want your Linux guys to manage the host themselves, you would have to add that permission on every single of these Linux folders. Yeah, that is right. Yeah. So in that case, um, I don't see that often with my customers. That's probably why my folder structure yeah. here <laughs> works this good. Um, that might be a reason to think about a different folder structure. I give you that. Yes. Um, it will work, as you said, um, with this folder layout. It's just a little more work in the end. Um, but if you're working consistently, then that shouldn't be a problem. And it might even help the colleagues okay. um, that are using the configuration interface if they again find a consistent folder structure um, when they're working with it. Although it's a little bit more work for you, it might avoid errors on their end. Uh, okay, so what's what would you do if you have a, a company with just one location? You just drop the first level of the tree? Um, uh, do you make one folder? <laughs> yeah, that, that depends a little bit on the ambition of the company, yeah, I okay. would say. Because if you have a company you know that will never expand, then you might think about dropping this first level and just start with a technical layer. But I would think, I would think most companies at some point will have a second location. Maybe even okay. if it's the, the, your nice bakery from the neighborhood, um, even that bakery might at one point yeah. have uh, another um, location, even if it's just a few yes. uh, meters uh, away. Um, so even then it's helpful if you started with a location folder, even yeah. if it's just one, okay. um, you will have no problem to scale that up. But how, how difficult is it to, to change the folder structure later? For example, uh, you started without a uh, location level mm -hmm. and then you get a second location and want to introduce a completely new level at the bottom of the tree. Or the top of the tree. At the top of the tree. Uh, um, how difficult is that? Well, it's really not that difficult because you can just create a new folder and move all the existing folders into this folder. So it's the, do the doing itself is not that hard in the end. Um, but what you have to keep in mind, if you are running your instance for a few years before yeah. you do that, there's a lot of rules and you have placed them in some folders. Yes. So it might happen that rules are placed in a certain folder. You don't know where they are exactly yeah. and if you change your folder structure the rules won't match anymore you and depending on subtle problems <laughs> right subtle or not so subtle yeah. so yeah that's something it doesn't have to happen it yeah, can okay. be really easy and work as you suggested but it might lead to new um, problems down the road and I if if i completely start with jack and k f from scratch and i'm not sure about the folder structure do you think it's a good way just to make a kind of pilot installation where I don't care about the folder structure, get experience with check and care a couple of months and then create the final structure or would you think it's best first to think about the structure and then write start in? in I think it's worthwhile uh, taking a few minutes um, to think about the folder structure in advance um, because oftentimes if you create a test system and it works pretty good, yeah. <laughs> people tend to use this test installation and mm. suddenly it's a productive system. Yeah, and never want to change it later because of the, the hassles. Right, okay. exactly. So sometimes it's just worthwhile to think about it for a few moments, um, consider what your company um, uh, company's infrastructure looks like, and then you can start with it. It doesn't have to be perfect on the first run, of course. Um, you can learn and change things later on, but if you put a little thought into it, maybe keeping in mind uh, what we have looked at here, um, that might uh, get you a long way before you have to change anything. And one last question. Um, it's possible to have a folder that contains subfolders and hosts. Right. Uh, is that a good idea to, m to use that feature or what do you think about that? Well, I think um, it can be problematic. So I would avoid having um, both hosts and folders within a folder. Um, so because you just, just would suggest to have the, the, the host in the leave folders. Yeah, I, I, may, right. I mean, that's always possible because you can always create a subfolder for that host that would be in the folder. Exactly. Like we are seeing here, we have a folder with a Linux host. And let's say we don't have a folder for Windows host because you only have one Windows server. Um, you would like to put it in here. Um, that wouldn't be a problem. Um, technically, it would work. Yeah. Um, but if you have settings on the folder that we are in here, so if here the infrastructure folder yeah. um, had settings on it, they would apply to the Windows server as well to the Linux folder. Yes. And at some point that will create problems for you. So then it's the better way to create a Windows folder as we see here. And even if it's just one host, put it yeah, in the folder. Um, 
It's so clean out the words problem. So to summarize it, best ideas for each folder, it either should contain subfolders or hosts. Right. And that's not really a limitation. Yeah. It's not a technical yeah. limitation, but it's a really good yeah, idea okay. to separate that. Yeah. So um, what about renaming a folder? So if I later just want to change the name of a folder, will I run into any problem irgendwie, uh, with some cross references or something? Or um, that? There won't be problems with uh, cross references in other places uh, in the configuration. Um, the problem you will have in the end, it's not obvious to you in the front end. In the front end, that will work. You can rename a folder. I could say I want to rename Linux to Unix, for example. That is not a problem at all. That works and you will, it will work for you um, on the front end. But if at some point you uh, want to um, open terminal and work on your CheckMK server um, on the command line, yeah. then the folder name that you see here will not change. So in this case, I mean, I mean, I mean every folder in the setup uh, corresponds to one actual file system folder in your configuration. Right, exactly. The whole folder tree that you see in the user interface has a representation on the file system. And the file system names are the folder names that you set here. But if you rename the folder, it won't rename the file system name. Right, exactly. So. Actually, the folder names on the file system are lowercase. That's the yeah. only difference. But if we take our Linux folder here, it has a major L, but in the file system, it would be with a, a lowercase L. Um, so that you would find this folder there. But if I now rename this folder to Windows, then in the file system, it's still, the file Linux, system it's still Linux, <laughs> but there are Windows hosts in it. Very confusing. Yeah, okay. Right. It so could create confusion. It's just a side note in the end, but you want to keep that in mind because in bigger setups, yeah, uh, okay. it can so cause trouble in the future. In order to avoid that problem, you, you, you probably would create a new folder with a right. new correct name, then move all the hosts over. And delete the old one. With a bulk move and, and delete the old one. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Good. That would be the way. Good. Very good. So I hope you got some ideas for yourself for folder structure and thanks Robin for your insights. My pleasure. And see you again next video.